Obviously. Parents adore their kids. However. Most parents would confess that there's a huge sigh of relief when it's time for bed. But there are usually surprises when it's time to go to bed. Watching this video of a girl and her brother staying up late for an unbelievable cause is what you're in for today. Could it have been because of regular childhood illnesses? Sleep deprivation? Or nightmares? None of those things were considered for long. It was something far more annoying than anything else. What was the point of not informing her if her children knew why they were acting the way they were? Having her children was a stroke of luck. And Valerie knew it. In contrast to other siblings who were always bickering. Valerie's children Vivian and Levi got along famously. As the older sibling. Levi was very serious about his job. For Valerie's two-bedroom Santa Monica home. It was convenient for the two to share a bedroom. Prior to Valerie seeing anything out of the ordinary. Everything appeared to be going swimmingly. Before Levi showed there. She didn't give it much attention. But now she knows it was a major problem. It appeared as though her little angel hadn't gotten enough sleep. And she saw his weary face. Her worry was palpable as she interrogated her cereal-eating son. Levi. But he averted his eyes and shrugged. These signals of exhaustion were not new to her usually upbeat youngsters. Why hadn't Levi clarified the issue? Hey. How about we all share a bed for the night? Valerie proposed. Levi shook his head in disinterest. And she knew she had to do something about the problem. Levi took my binky, Valerie's kid said while sarcastically shaking her head. Rendering her mother's daughter completely useless. As everything were running smoothly. Valerie may have noticed that Vivian's blanket was gone, Levi had to have stolen it or given it to her. The following night. Valerie went to inspect their beds in her mission to uncover the truth. She decided to set up a room camera since she was good with electronics. Valerie analyzed the tape for eight hours straight in an effort to find out what happened. While Vivian appeared satisfied and devoured her food rapidly. Levi appeared as weary as ever. Resembling a small zombie. If Levi was having nightmares or difficulties sleeping. Valerie wanted to know. She chose to watch the tape from the night before after they departed for the performance. It was shocking to her. As she tossed and turned in her crib, Vivian rose to her feet and said to her brother Levi, Levi, I want to lie down in your bed while taking my baby. From the sound of this, Levi rose and went to the crib. Let me think, Levi replied. Before swiftly assuring Valerie that everything was okay. After he set a stool under Vivian's feet. She was able to leave the crib. Thank you. Levi, Vivian whispered. As time went on. The situation became even more touching. When her daughter clambered up and seized the railing. Valerie observed. As soon as Vivian believed she had mastered the latch system. She swung her little leg over the side. The prospect of such a long fall for her infant prompted Valerie's maternal instincts to come into action. Her mouth dropped open when she watched in horror as Levi sprung from his bed, hopped onto the step stool, and placed it just where Vivian was about to tumble. Next, he watched his sister intently, prepared to pounce if necessary. Valerie made the decision to invite her husband Chris over while she went about her day. Lending a hand where she could. She updated him on the situation for a minute. Her eyes widened with surprise. Their laughing reverberated throughout the home as she replayed the footage. Vivian's first words in the scene were. Oh. I forgot my binky. Turning around. She saw Levi roll his eyes and say, 
Binky, before she sprinted back to the crib and picked up a cloth. With a chuckle. Levi said. Those are your pajamas. Facing the crib as though it were a mountain she had to climb back inside. Vivian hesitated. Levi's big brother instincts took over just when she was ready to step in. You forgot your baby, he muttered. And even though he was only a year older. He managed to climb up without any difficulty and get the doll and blanket. Vivian. Meanwhile. Seemed to have forgotten something significant and crossed the room. The doll was waving above the crib railing when Levi yelled. Hold it. When Vivian realized she had forgotten something important. She ran back to get it. Then Levi threw aside the covers and hopped back into bed. Inviting Vivian to join him. They carried out their little ritual well into the morning. Levi woke up and helped his sister out of her wonderful sleep by gently prodding her. He helped her back into bed. Tucked her toy under her arm. Put her bed back neatly. And covered her with her binky. He gave the doll a touch on the head and a peck on the cheek before going to his own bed. Valerie and Chris exchanged sardonic glances when the poignant drama came to a conclusion. Their hearts seemed to be about to explode from the cuteness of it all. As they shed tears of happiness together. They were relieved that nothing harmful was going on, just a brother and sister watching out for each other, even if the riddle had been solved and they now knew why Levi was so exhausted. Valerie quickly posted the footage on the family's social media accounts. How did the world respond? While it's true that all parents think their child is the cutest, an outsider may not find anything particularly touching in a gurgling burp or a tantrum over mismatched socks. That was fine with Valerie, she only hoped the circumstance would make their closest family members laugh. A few days later, the video's popularity skyrocketed to over 50,000 views as the likes started rolling in. And that was only the start. Global viewers left comments on the video, which soon surpassed 1 million views. Valerie never expected to receive a call later that day offering them a flight to appear on the Ellen DeGeneres show. She laughed heartily with Chris. And even Vivian and Levi could appreciate the thrill of a free excursion that included a plane ride. They were seated next to the well-known host a few weeks later. As Valerie and her partner got ready for their concert, butterflies of worry fluttered in her tummy. She engaged in the endearing chat as her children took the lead. Discussing with the host their shared love for one another and a brief experience of summer camping that they all treasured. She had no idea that there would be more surprises ahead. Ellen smiled and remarked. I understand you all appreciate Disney. We would like to take you all to Disney World because Shutterfly adores tales similar to yours. Beyond their expectations. An attendant showed up with a massive gift basket full of fast passes and an opulent hotel stay. It went much deeper than the perfect family vacation. Though, she and Chris both knew that Vivian and Levi would always be there for one another. The second aspect of the surprise was international in scope. The film provoked an amazing conversation that was a jovial flurry of concepts about diversity. Compassion and politeness. It underlined how important unity is right now more than ever. Valerie thought how lucky she was to have such amazing children. Some parents prefer to co-sleep with their children. Especially when nursing. In contrast to Vivian and Levi who slept alone. In the following tale. A mother installs a camera to find out why she is constantly exhausted. Her heart raced as she completed her nightly ritual of putting the kids to bed. Brushing her teeth. Setting up the camera in her bedroom. And shutting out the lights. She was astounded to see what she had missed when she watched the video. She could see everything that was happening to her. 
Melanie Darnell is a mother of three. A vegan fitness guru with 100,000 blog followers. And she balances her kids' needs with a regular workout and wellness routine. However, not many people knew what was going on. And nobody would have taken her word for it. It would never have occurred to anyone that Melanie was genuinely suffering from acute tiredness. She first believed the weird noises, which started 10 months ago, were coming from the ancient wooden house or trees blown by the wind. Regardless, matter the weather. Melanie had to face the truth. Even worse, she would wake up from each night feeling excessively exhausted. As if something were disturbing her sleep. The sounds, which had only intensified, now appeared to originate from the area immediately outside her bedroom door. Her husband was out of the house on business, leaving her and the kids alone. With the words, You must be experiencing something quite unusual if you're not sleepwalking, her husband proposed installing a night vision camera to monitor the situation. Her concern was heightened by his advice. Fearing that Freddie may be paying Melanie a nighttime visit, Melanie's mind reverted to the classic horror films she had watched as a child. Despite her shivers, she proceeded to put up the camera in an effort to escape the isolation and darkness of her bedroom. Melanie had taken to sleeping on the couch as of late. However, this strategy had not worked. Like when she'd been in her room. She was completely worn out. But a vague recollection unsettled her. Even though it felt like a dream at times. She recalled waking up once and feeling air brushed over her face before falling back to sleep. Things would turn pivotal at that point. In the midst of putting her children to bed, she anxiously set up the camera in her room. She had no idea what to anticipate the following morning and had no idea how shocking the truth would be. Melanie shifted silently in bed while watching the footage of herself, ultimately falling asleep. Things appeared to be under control initially. She pressed the fast-forward button in a desperate attempt to confirm she was alone in the room and that she wasn't sleepwalking. The result, however, was completely counter to her expectations. Melanie was taken aback and reeled in her disbelief as she paused and rewound the tape. Subsequently, she witnessed a diminutive figure clambering into her bed after forcing its way into her room. Her astonishment was palpable. She had been totally oblivious when she observed herself drifting off to sleep. As the footage progressed, Melanie's bed transformed into a lively scene. And she drew closer to falling asleep. She had already put her children to bed many times between 9 and 10 in the morning when she first saw them at 2 in the morning. Melanie was asleep and unresponsive to the noise but she was nonetheless disturbed when she tossed and turned in her sleep. The feeling of breath that Melanie had experienced was thereafter clarified by what she observed. As her child attempted to tug on her hair, she embraced him and brushed it away, giving the impression that she was half awake and half asleep. She chose to post the shocking footage on her platform since it was so upsetting. Parenting doesn't stop when the sun goes down, she wrote in her piece. In these moments, let us take solace in the fact that we are not alone in holding our children in the dark of our own houses, we are all parents. After all. And we are all up with our kids at the same hour. Melanie felt the need to emphasize how difficult and unforgiving motherhood is. Moms sometimes encounter criticism despite the daily challenges they endure. So she also wanted to convey the less glamorous sides of motherhood. Melanie, on the other hand, would give it everything to keep it. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Now, let's watch another similar story. 
amazing things have transpired in the 27 years after Elizabeth adopted a youngster named Jordan, who was four years old. Upon laying eyes on little Jordan at the neighborhood orphanage, Elizabeth felt an overwhelming sense of affection. When asked to reflect on that unforgettable day, Elizabeth said, they placed him in my arms. And it was love at first sight. In an interview, right from the beginning, he felt like a family member. It didn't take long for Elizabeth to decide to adopt Jordan and take him home. Still, a major roadblock stood in the way. Jordan's biological mother had specifically asked that an African-American or mixed-race couple adopt him. Elizabeth had to fight hard to get the adoption because she was white. For the subsequent four years, Elizabeth spared no effort in her pursuit of convincing the appropriate authorities that she was the perfect mother for Jordan. In order to adopt him, she had to beg and persuade everyone. In spite of everything, Elizabeth was able to achieve her goal because she was so determined and persistent, with her heart full of love. Elizabeth brought her adopted son home to begin a new chapter in their life together as soon as the adoption was approved. Elizabeth, who was born in Arizona, had a remarkable knack for taking care of foster children, she eventually welcomed 120 of them into her home. After suffering a devastating loss, Elizabeth may have felt a calling to care for children in foster care. Even though she loved him very much, her fiancé Sam dumped her for a younger lady a few months before their wedding. After Elizabeth got over her initial shock, she made a solemn promise to herself that she would never get married again. Instead, Elizabeth's profound affection for children led her to devote her life and meager means to caring for foster children. A foster child would be placed with Elizabeth by the local orphanage upon her request. The child would remain with her until the orphanage authorities found a permanent home for them. Elizabeth rose to prominence and renown among the children in the area's orphanages as a result of this arrangement. Because she helped alleviate some of the responsibility for the foster children, the orphanage officials were grateful to her because Elizabeth never left the orphans without something. They loved and treasured her. Toys and bags of sweets, lollipops, cookies, and other delicacies were staples in her visit bags, and the kids loved them all. Working as a cashier at a local bank was a respectable profession for Elizabeth, so she divided her time between that and volunteering at orphanages. Almost all of her free time was spent playing with the youngsters and giving them her gifts, just like a contemporary version of Mrs. Claus. Elizabeth met infant Jordan in this setting. Following the adoption, Elizabeth welcomed him into her house as her son by legal adoption. From that point on, she lavished him with love and care, more than any mother could offer her biological children. Elizabeth showered Jordan with love and made sure he had all he needed. Unlike any other mother-child relationship, the one that developed between Elizabeth and Jordan when he matured was unparalleled in depth and intensity. Jordan was seven years old when, three years later, he unexpectedly became very sick. Jordan had a fever, started throwing up, and lost his appetite. Elizabeth was scared because of his very high body temperature. She hurried Jordan to the hospital two days after he began exhibiting these symptoms. The doctor performed a battery of tests and determined that Jordan had pneumonia. When the doctor told Elizabeth the news, she started crying, Ma'am, why are you crying? The physician inquired reassuringly, The disease does not guarantee death. We can provide your youngster the necessary medical attention, so he should be better in a few days. Jordan's condition did not, however, get better as rapidly as the physician had promised, rather, things got worse for him. And Elizabeth's anxieties and fears became more intense, she asked to have an additional bed brought into Jordan's ward and never left his bedside, the hospital administration granted her wish, and she spent her son's whole stay sleeping next to her. As Elizabeth hurried Jordan to the hospital, she either misplaced or lost her phone, the phone itself didn't really matter to her when she finally realized it was missing. Her plan was to formally request sick leave from her employer by contacting the manager of the bank where she worked, however, the manager's and her co-worker's contact details were stored on the misplaced phone. If Elizabeth returned to the office, she would probably have to wait a few days for her sick leave to be approved, which would require her to leave Jordan's side. It was impossible for Elizabeth to leave her son's bedside. She was unable to leave her adored son's hospital bed for anything on earth, right then, Jordan's recuperation was her top concern, everything else had to wait, after she made her decision, 
Jordan's symptoms started to gradually but steadily get better. Much to Elizabeth's great relief, Jordan was still in the thick of things after suffering from a terrifying illness for almost three weeks. But at least his temperature had subsided and his appetite had returned in full, nevertheless. His muscles ached and he still felt rather weak, as she individually spoon-fed Jordan like a newborn baby. Elizabeth was ecstatic, Jordan made a full recovery and was released from the hospital in less than two weeks, grateful and relieved. Elizabeth brought her darling son home, for her, it had been an unparalleled trauma spanning over five weeks. Elizabeth's grief wasn't even close to what it had been when her ex-lover had cast her aside like garbage. She saw it as over when her cherished kid fully recovered and returned home. Two days later, Elizabeth left Jordan for school as usual early in the morning and headed to her job. Elizabeth was apprehensive when she entered the bank because it had been about five weeks since she had last been, though she prayed for a miracle, she was afraid of the worst, the majority of her co-workers stared at her as if she were a stranger, bewildered to see her again. They had assumed that Elizabeth had quit quietly and permanently left the town, a small group of devoted co-workers came up to her and wished her a happy return, before Elizabeth knew it, she was seated at her desk and the intercom rang, her palm trembled as she responded, and sure enough, it was her manager, Mr. Johnson told Elizabeth to report to his office without any more ado. Anger and frustration welled up inside the no-nonsense manager when he watched her approach the office through the massive CCTV screen on his desk, he never let his guard down. Watching every move his employees and clients made, as she walked slowly to Mr. Johnson's office, Elizabeth braced herself to face the repercussions of her deeds, taking a deep breath, as soon as he stepped into the plush office, Mr. Johnson glanced up from the screen and briefly met her eyes, standing at his desk, Elizabeth did her utmost to evade his inquisitive stare, suddenly, the reason he had summoned her back came flooding back to Mr. Johnson. He demanded to know why she had skipped work for five weeks in a very unpleasant manner, while trying to describe her time spent at the hospital with her ill son, Elizabeth stumbled over her words, to emphasize how bad things were, she went so far as to bring up her misplaced phone, she begged Mr. Johnson to be merciful while yet being just, nonetheless, Mr. Johnson remained steadfast, this is a business firm, not a charity, he stated with more conviction. You must strictly adhere to the rules, no matter what, despite Elizabeth's anticipation, his subsequent remarks hit her like a ton of bricks, you are hereby fired, Mr. Johnson nearly yelled out into the air, let this serve as a lesson to others that such behavior will not be tolerated. As Elizabeth took in the devastating truth of her predicament, she fought to keep her tears back, it was something Elizabeth wanted to avoid doing so that Mr. Johnson could enjoy watching her weep, the idea of groveling before him and pleading with him to change his mind crossed her mind at first, but she quickly dismissed the idea as fruitless, silently, she left Mr. Johnson's office, knowing he would keep his promise, after she got to her desk. She gathered all of her possessions and rushed out of the bank without saying a word to anyone. After returning home, she sobbed uncontrollably before wiping them away, taking comfort in the knowledge that she had given up her career for her cherished son. Elizabeth had a rough go of it in the months immediately following her job loss. She was resolute in her desire to remain strong for Jordan's sake, even though she battled to make ends meet while caring for herself and him. She would sometimes go hungry herself so that Jordan would have enough to eat, but she soon had good fortune on her side. Elizabeth got a better job at a bigger insurance company six months later, with a larger salary, some semblance of normalcy was restored, an exceptionally bright young man, Jordan was accepted to a prominent university to study civil engineering when he was twenty years old, for her cherished son. Elizabeth was overjoyed, almost every weekend while she was in college. Jordan stayed in touch with her and visited her at home, Jordan got a high-paying position with a big construction company within six months after graduating four years later, and he even got an official car and other perks, a sense of joy washed over the mother and her adopted son, Elizabeth had done a great job molding Jordan into the guy he is today, Elizabeth was the best mother he could have asked for, and he will be eternally thankful to her, seven years later, though. Tragedy struck when Elizabeth became very sick, as soon as Jordan got off school, she was whisked away to the hospital, 
Elizabeth was told by the physicians that she would need a kidney transplant in order to survive after a battery of tests identified her with polycystic kidney disease. The news devastated Jordan. For nearly 27 years, Elizabeth had been his world, and the prospect of losing her was unbearable. He would risk everything, no matter the cost, to preserve her life. Jordan told the medical staff right away that he would be willing to give his adopted mother one of his kidneys. Thankfully, Jordan's kidney matched Elizabeth perfectly after the physicians performed all the required testing to confirm compatibility. Elizabeth felt conflicted when the medical professionals told her about Jordan's decision prior to the transplant. She wasn't entirely in favor of or against his plan. She seemed conflicted over Jordan's choice to give her a kidney. She insisted on reminding Jordan that he wasn't required to follow through for her and that he could back out at any moment. Jordan, though, was adamant, with much affection, he told his adopted mother, No, Mom, I want to do this for you. Elizabeth felt comforted and relieved by his remarks. She merely wanted Jordan to understand that she wasn't putting him under any duress to do this for her. After a few days, the transplant went well, and Elizabeth recovered completely in three weeks. She recovered fully and was released from the hospital. Elizabeth once claimed that she couldn't have hoped for a nicer son in an interview, Jordan, however, stated, I feel like this was my calling in life, in reference to his choice to give a kidney to Elizabeth, it's the least I could do for her right now, but as I get older, I hope I can do more for her, he said, everything she's done for me since I was a kid, I just wanted to give something back and show her how much I appreciate her. Jordan continued with tears in his eyes. Jordan was essentially saying that Elizabeth's unwavering love and drive gave him a life when no one else loved him and helped to develop him into the man he is today. Giving back that life was the least he could do as a token of appreciation to his cherished adoptive mother, Jordan, who is now 31 years old, can hardly talk about everything Elizabeth has done for him without crying, which is a testament to how much he values her. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comment section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.